So we can get started. Um, once again, my name is Allie Koziak and I'm with Community Relations. Um, today we're going to talk about planning your holiday budget. And we have Terilyn Rose, Calco Certified Financial Fitness Coach, uh, presenting today. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to put them into the questions box. I have Armando Marin and Jason Bunch from Business Development who can answer questions. And then we'll also have Carolyn answer some questions at the end as well. Um, so thanks again for joining us, and Carolyn, take it away. Thank you so much. Now, my name is Carolyn Rose. I've been providing financial fitness at Calcos for the past 12 years, and this is one of my favorite topics as Christmas comes around, as the holidays come around. Uh, people tend to put a lot of this spending on their credit cards, so for me, this is a really near and dear. This is also one of my biggest expenses that I have throughout the year. So I like to share some tips and information on this. So we're talking about planning that holiday budget. I'm going to get back to the screen. Let me forward this for us. What we're going to cover today is why do we spend, kind of researching some of our expenses, getting ready to plan ahead for the next year. It's kind of a little late now, but we'll cover some things that may help you. Looking for ways to maybe spend a little bit less. And then once you have a plan for the holidays, giving you some tips and tools so that you can stick to that plan. So first we're gonna to get to the heart of the holidays. Talk a little bit, um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I think it's fascinating to talk about the reasons why we spend during the holidays. What are the psychological and the emotional reasons? How did you grow up? What are some of the traditions that you've had in your family like ours? We used to always on Christmas Eve open up. We had to have slippers. We had to have new PJs. We always read a book. In the morning, we got up and we raced down so we could open our stockings before the adults got up, usually like four o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then they woke up and we had a big holiday breakfast together, opened all of our presents, went over to our family. So those are the traditions that I grew up with, how my family celebrated. So in my mind, I have this big build up and Christmas has to be this amazing family oriented event. So I just kind of want you thinking a little bit about what your traditions express to you, how your family celebrates, what holidays you celebrate. And we think about that holiday cheer, is it spending time with your family, is it spending big amounts of money and just expressing that to everybody. So just kind of thinking about what the heart of the holidays means to you and not spending a lot of time here. I just like you thinking about it. So this is on to the next step which is researching. And this is really thinking about what you spend. There's so many big, big gifts that we spend on our family, the immediate family, the you know kids, the spouse, the moms, dads, aunts, uncles, nephews, nieces. But I also want you thinking about the little things that go along, gifts for extended family, so the uncles of the uncles of the uncles, the gifts for your coworkers, don't forget your boss, you know, not bribing or anything, but just remember your boss. Uh, getting gifts for your teachers who help with your kids, gifts for other service people, housekeeper, postman, massage therapist. Um, you're going to Christmas parties or holiday parties. Do you bring a hostess gift, a bottle of wine? And then at work, the infamous secret Santa gifts. So just kind of really thinking about everywhere that you are spending money. And we have another page on this. <laughs> And we're talking about the additional considerations that go along with the spending. It's not just the gifts, right? It's holiday meals. So Thanksgiving, there's Christmas. We always have prime rib and that is not cheap. Baking supplies, my family and I do uh, cookies. So all the extra things that go along with baking for the holidays. If you have any parties, all the supplies that go along with that, buy a Christmas tree, do any holiday de decorations, tree decorations, flowers for the hostess on top of the wine. If you go to any holiday events with pork, if you donate to any charities, do you buy gift wrap, gift tags, ribbon and tape? Reading, just going down that list, all these little things that add up shipping costs. I have family in Montana, so it costs about $30, $40 to send the box of gifts that I send to them. I have to include that and in what I'm spending. And I have a nice 
neat little gift right and I'm going to attach this and send this to everybody at the end of this event that kind of will help you go down that list so the significant other child one child two mom dad and uncle niece nephew grandma grandpa best friend one best friend two boss hostess and it just keeps going and then we have the stuff for the holidays the gift wrap because you know somehow the gift tags I don't know where they go I have to buy new ones every year uh, cards. I know a lot of people don't still do that, but some people do. I buy them and then I fill them all out. And then for some reason, I just never get them out. And I end up having them stacked at house. So uh, shipping costs, holiday meal, baking supplies, all of that stuff getting in there, kind of just writing it all down so that you're thinking about all the different events that go along and all the different things that you do with your family that add to the spending at the end of the year. So now we've got this number, right? We, we've pulled all this stuff up and we've looked at everywhere the money is going. And I want to start, again, it might be a little bit late for this year, but it's gonna be a lot easier next year if we plan ahead and we start setting money aside every single paycheck. This is my favorite way of taking care of my holiday spending. So I'm gonna take the total from that gift card that I just did. So I'm spending, you know, $100 on, my kids and $100 on my spouse and you know just kind of go down that list and say I fill all that out and with all the Christmas tree and we go to the nutcracker and we go do Christmas caroling and we come back and we make cookies and we have cocoa all of that adds up to about $3,000 mine was actually a lot higher but $3,000 is easier for math so $3,000 I get paid bi-weekly so at 26 pay periods in the year when I get paid bi-weekly. So if I divide that $3,000 by my 26 pay periods, that's $115.38, okay? If I get paid semi-monthly, like on the 5th and the 20th, I've got 24 pay periods, that's $125. If I get paid monthly, if I'm a teacher, $3,000 divided by 12 pay periods, $250 a month. So the way you plan ahead is one of my favorite things that California Coast does is we can set up different savings accounts and you can title them however you want. So I have my gift savings, I have a vacation savings, I have an auto savings so I can buy tires in three years. So I have this gift savings and I have this automatic transfer set up. The day that I get paid, I automatically transfer this dollar amount that I know I'm going to spend into that account and that money is strictly for gifts and holidays and events so i'm saving that money so that when these holidays come around i am ready to go i don't have to worry about how i'm going to come up with the money to buy that i can't say atari console that gives you a little idea of how old i am but you know one of the new xbox i don't even know what the names of all those things are anymore my kids are 28 so um but all the big expenses that we have that come along with buying gifts for people and so you can call it gift savings, you can call it holiday savings, you can call it, oh my goodness, kids are expensive savings. You can title it however you want and have this money just being set aside every single paycheck. It makes it a lot easier to put that money aside. So I really love that idea of planning ahead. So one of the things I'm looking at now is I'm looking at my total. And I'm, I'm when I filled out my gift grid, it was $4,800 a year. Yeah, because so I've been divorced for over 20 years. I still buy gifts for him, for his two kids, for his mom, dad, his sister, and their three kids. And I love the holidays. Um, so I'm looking at, you know, I, I looked at that total, $4,800, and that was a lot of money. So I'm looking at, I don't have that money set aside now, right? I haven't done this. I haven't planned ahead and I'm going to be struggling at the holidays. And if I don't look at where the money is going, I'm going to end up putting it on credit cards and then paying it off in the next six months after the holidays are already over at 26.99%. So I want to see if I can open my cash flow a little bit and get a little more money now. So some of the ways that we do that is we're increasing the cash flow. So I'm going to look at ways that maybe I can reduce some of my monthly expenses. Maybe I can look at my cell phone bill and I was paying $87 at one and I did some research and did a family plan with my roommate and my daughters and I'm paying 
$37. So that's opening somebody every single paycheck. Looking at my auto insurance, my home insurance, I recommend people do this at least once every six months anyways. Um, and look at, can I go from $120 on my auto insurance to maybe $80? And everywhere I'm looking at and looking at ways I can open up that money, look at anything that's unnecessary and maybe hold it for a little while. I mean, if you're not going to the gym, why are we paying for it? So suspend it for a few months. Um, if I don't really need to have Hulu and Amazon and uh HBO and Showtime and Disney, like all these different things. It's $20 here, $20 here, $20 here. Do I really have to do that right now? Can I suspend it for two months and use that $100 to do something else? I can sell something, look around the house. Poshmark is a really good way of selling clothes, looking at you know Craigslist or offer up and look at ways that maybe you can spend something you haven't been using for a while. We have one of those um, older, older, uh, treadmills you know we don't really need it of course nobody really likes to think about fitness <laughs> during the holidays at least i don't um, but that's one way that we can get some extra cash and if we just looked at all the expenses and we've reduced everything that we possibly can and we're looking at ways to get some more money potentially get a part-time job and just use all of that money a lot of people hire during the holidays for just short term to get through um, and so just look at those kinds of places so that we can increase that cash flow for you. Now we're going to go to, we look at increasing your income. How do we spend less? And this is one of the really interesting things to look at. Uh, for me, we kind of grew up with, you know, not a whole lot, but my mom always went really crazy at the holidays. So for me, it's just kind of how I grew up and you, you're thinking about all the warm and fuzzy feelings and I wanna do the same thing for my daughters. You know, that was my life. And then I also have, we had some tight years and I wanna make sure that my daughters never struggle. So Christmas for me is, oh, let's get them that vacuum cleaner that they don't have. So I'm looking for all these different ways that I've spent money and do I really have to spend that much? And when I think about the holidays, when when I think about how I grew up and, and the gifts that we received and the gifts that I've given to my daughters over time, and I asked my daughters once what I had gotten them for Christmas a few years ago, and, and they couldn't remember, right? But they still remember the time that we went on a road trip and we did kayaking at night with a guy who was pointing out constellations and telling us the stories. We had, uh, clam chowder on every single pier all the way up to Santa Barbara, up to Santa Clara. We went and did Shakespeare in the park and listened to Twelfth Night. And we just have these amazing memories. And we still talk about that. And that was like 15 years ago. So I'm buying all this stuff and, and they don't remember the stuff that I bought them. So I've talked to them this year and I said, you know what? Like if I put all this money that I usually spend on you guys at Christmas, and I put it into a vacation fund. I took you guys to Italy in two years for two weeks. How do you guys feel about that? And surprisingly, they thought that was a great idea. So we always have this choice in how we're spending our money and where it goes. So I wanted to take a look at, okay, let's do less stuff that get, ends up going to Goodwill anyways and do more time, more things that are going to help our family and our friends. Baking for the holidays, giving as gifts. Some people are not very good at baking cookies and pies, so that's a nice little thing to do. Volunteering or donating your time is a really good way of helping out, making your own ornaments. That's actually kind of a fun event. If, um, you know, social distancing, you get together, you make your own ornaments, and we do that exchange. Some family and friends are having a really hard time getting time away to do things, so just babysit for 24 hours to give that family a break. That's a, you know, time is an amazing gift. Offering to clean their house. It's one of my least favorite things to do. So if I can get somebody else to do it, that is the best gift that you could give me. Uh, fixing a leak in the house, repairing the fence, doing nail prep. That's one of the really cool things that, you know, feed them for a whole week and they don't have to worry about cooking. That's a gift of time too. One of the other things that our family did is the white elephant exchange. So on um, my daughter's father's side, instead of buying gifts for every single person in the family, we all buy one gift for $30. And when we get together, we do the steal. You know, you get to steal twice and then you're stuck with it. Um, and it's so much fun. We have so many incredible 
funny stories of this white elephant exchange. It's really, really fun. And the other thing that we did is someone actually bought an actual physical ceramic white elephant. Someone gets that, they have it for the whole year and they write down you know, what they've done with the white elephant and then we bring it back the next year. So just kind of a little thing that we do. The other way is looking at the coupons and groupons doing sales. So shopping early in the year, this is something that when, because I'm setting money aside every single paycheck, I'm actually able to take advantage of Veterans Day sales, right? And President's Day sales and all the after Valentine's Day sales and all these little things that because I got this really amazing 24 piece set of um, all the pots and pans for my daughters and it was $35 on sale after Christmas. It was an amazing deal. I just held on to it, gave it to them the next year. So shopping early, shopping during all those events because we're setting that money aside actually can help you spend less and still make it look like you're giving a lot more. So that's a way to spend less on gifts. Now we're gonna go to all the events. So again, Christmas for my family was just this amazing, magical event. Didn't matter if we didn't have anything. We always had amazing Christmases. Uh, but looking at all the different events, especially in San Diego, we have a lot of different free events here. We love to go Christmas car caroling at Starlight Circle. They always have uh, kettle corn and we get ch hot chocolate with marshmallows and come back and sing songs. Uh, there's a lot of ho free holiday light events tree lighting, going sledding. We're really close to Julian. And maybe you don't have a sled. I actually looked this up and looked at all the different things that you could use instead of an actual sled, like garbage can lids, um, going getting laundry baskets. They said, get a really heavy duty garbage bag and just wrap yourself in that and slide on down. So there are different things that you can do without spending a lot of money. I'm a big reader. I love holiday stories. So I like getting in and every single day reading a different holiday story and reading about different holidays. Looking at, you know, I am I was born and raised with Christmas. Uh, the people celebrate Hanukkah, people celebrate Kwanzaa, people celebrate Ramadan. Look at all the different holidays that there are and really get to know who is in our community have a holiday music karaoke night. Our family loves to sing. We are singing all of the time. And this is my daughter does play piano so we can get together and we can just sing all night long to our heart's content while we have our dinner together. So there are definitely ways that you can still enjoy the holiday spirit without spending a lot of money going out and about and doing things. So just Google, you know, go and do that search for all the different events that are happening in San Diego. There's Hanukkah on the day of it, but there are different events for Hanukkah. Um, going down to Coronado when they have the snow days, going to Julian when they have the snow days. There's a lot of really cool things to do. We're like 20 minutes away from everything here in San Diego. It's a great place to live during the holidays and we have so many different places to go look at the lights. That's a really good evening too. So I do recommend you go take a look at all those different things. And we went through this really fast, um, but we wanted to make sure that we had some time, you know, to really look into the different things and get through this all. I just wanna see if anybody has any questions about anything that we touched on. We are gonna get this out to you guys um, after this event is done. We're gonna go ahead and email the whole workshop. We're gonna email that gift grid to you. I'm gonna email you a couple of the, the tree lighting events that are in San Diego and that um, looking at where all the lights are. We'll have that out to you guys too. Um, and do you guys have any questions? I know this is a really quick one, but we just wanted to quick touch on this right before the holidays come up because I know some people are struggling. Um, so anybody have any questions about anything? We don't have any questions so far, but if anyone has any, please throw them in the questions box and Carolyn will answer them. I feel like I talked really fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great presentation, lots of really great information, especially this year with everything going on. Yeah, I, I know that's one of the things that my daughters and I were really talking about because we we're all lucky that we were able to continue working. There's a lot of people who maybe their spouse isn't working and that they're not getting the extra $600 anymore on unemployment. So just looking at really understanding what the holidays mean to you and is it really all this stuff or is it more of the spending time with family and friends? And I know we can't do a lot of that either, but you know, just finding some ways to bring that holiday cheer to your household without spending 
a lot of money because you don't really have to. I've gone from my $4,800 a year down to $1,200 a year. And that difference is going to my vacation fund. And so two years, we plan on going to Tuscany and like to celebrate my daughter's 30th birthday. And we're going to go for two weeks and do a wine event and go biking. And it's just going to be an amazing event. And because I'm not going crazy at the holidays, I can help them and you know, maybe buy their plane tickets. And I have a timeshare so they don't have to pay for the place to stay. Um, so it, you know, two weeks is not going to cost a lot because I'm not going crazy. I can afford to do this. And we are going to have some amazing memories in Tuscany. <laughs> That's amazing. All about well, choices. it doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. Um, so I think we're ready to wrap it up. Um, thank you so much, Carolyn. If anyone has does have any questions that come up, um, Carolyn's email is on the screen. Um, and she will be happy to answer any of those that you have um, as they come up. Um, but thank you again, Carolyn. This was a great presentation. And we hope everyone has a safe and enjoyable holiday season. Thank you. Thank you.